Today we will be looking at 9.5, addition and subtraction of those complex expressions and complex fractions as well. We're going to start off by doing some easy problems, some problems that are review. If we are adding two fractions, the one thing that we know is that we must have a common denominator. If we don't have a common denominator, we have to make one. And our first one we do, both denominators are 5, so we add the numerators to get 4 fifths. When we look at number 2, we've got a denominator of x and a denominator of 2x. We need to get a common denominator before we can combine those pieces together. So we need to make them the same. What our first one is missing, we want to make this a 2x. So we're going to multiply it by 2, but if I multiply the bottom by 2, I've got to multiply the top by 2 as well. 2 times 5 gives us 10 over 2x plus 3x and 2x. Now that we have the same denominator, we can make that into one fraction. 10 plus 3x, we always put our x term first, we can't add those together because they're not like terms, all over 2x. When we look at number 3, we look at the denominator again, x plus 2, x plus 2. We have the same denominator, so we want to do 4 minus that quantity. Now subtraction can be a little bit trickier because we want to make sure that we're subtracting that entire thing. So we've got to distribute that negative to the 3x and the 2. So our denominator is the x plus 2. That becomes 4 minus 3x minus 2. Combine your like terms, so we've got a negative 3x. 4 minus 2 is 2, all over x plus 2. So when we are adding, the key is you must have the same denominator. If you don't have the same denominator, you've got to make one. And then you add the numerators together. All right, so let's uh, try some that are a little bit harder. With number 4, we've got a denominator of 5 and a denominator of x plus 2. We want to find a common denominator. That common denominator is 5 times x plus 2. So then we're going to multiply by what each piece is missing. So our first one, we need to add an x plus 2. So we multiply the top and bottom by x plus 2. And our second one, we are missing the 5. So we multiply the top and bottom by 5. 4 times x is 4x. Four, 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 5 on the second piece is 15. Now with the numerators, this is going to get a little bit tricky. The numerators, you're always going to multiply things out all the way. That way you can add your pieces together. The denominator, you want to leave them in factored form. So simplify the top, factor, multiply, or multiply everything out, keep the bottom factored. So we know that we're adding, so we've got the same denominator. We only have one of them. We add the numerators together. So 4x, 8, 15. Combine your like terms, we've got 4x, 8 plus 15 is going to give us 23. We look to see if anything else can be simplified in. There's nothing to be simplified. For number 5, this one may look really hard, but what you want to do, again, keep the numerators factored out, keep the denominators factored. So we want to factor the bottom of this fraction to see, do, maybe I have an x plus 8 factor. So two numbers that multiply to 32 and add to 12. Those two numbers are 8 and 4. So when I go to find that common denominator, we are missing, this one has x plus 8, so does this one. This one has x plus 4, this one doesn't. So only our second piece is missing, and it's missing an x plus 4. So our common denominator is x plus 8 and x plus 4 which means that nothing changed in our first piece, so we're going to go ahead and just write out x squared plus x plus 3, because we didn't multiply it by anything. In the second piece, 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 4 gives us 12x. We're going to combine those together so that we only have one fraction. On top, we've got x squared and 3x squared. 1 plus 3 gives us 4x squared. x, that's the only x. 3 and 12 is going to give us 15. Now I know that I said, oops, made a mistake. 3x times 4 is 12x. 
So that's going to be x plus 12 is 13x plus 3. Now I know I said make sure that you multiply the top out. That is up until you get to the last step. We multiply things out so we can combine like terms on the top, but we've got to see if this can break down. So I want to see if the top can factor. Since our a value is not 1 and there is no GCF, we've got to use Batman factoring, which is 4x plus 1 and x plus 3. The bottom, we've got x plus 8 and x plus 4. Now we look at that, sometimes you'll get it so that it factors and something cancels, which means you could simplify it down. In this case, you can't. So this one is a little bit more difficult because you multiply out to combine like terms and then you, in the end you've got to factor again to see if something can cancel. All right, so we're going to get into some fun ones, some that are a little bit more difficult. We look at number six. Our denominator here is six times x minus two. This one is a six x. When we are trying to find that common denominator, we have to make sure that we take into account everything from both of the denominators. This one has a 6, this one has a 6, so I don't have to worry about multiplying by a number. This one has an x minus 2, and this one has an x. So this piece is missing the x minus 2, and this piece is missing the x. So our common denominator in this case is a 6x times x minus 2. minus, and you got to make sure that you pay attention to the fact that we have a subtraction problem, so we've got to be careful there. On top over here, we've got a 7x. On our second piece, we've got x plus 3 times x minus 2, which means we have to FOIL. x times x is x squared, plus 3x, minus 2x, minus 6. So it's going to give us x squared, plus x, minus 6 when it's simplified down. We are subtracting, so when we make this into one fraction, we've got to make sure that we are distributing that negative to all three of those pieces. So we've got one denominator of 6x, x minus 2. We've got a 7x from our first piece, minus x squared, minus x, and that negative 6 becomes a positive 6. We combine our like terms. Make sure that we have it in descending order, so we've got a negative x squared. 7 minus 1 will give us a positive 6x plus 6. We look at this, and if we were to factor, we would have to pull out a negative 1, which you can if you want to. When we pull out that negative 1, we get a negative x squared minus 6x minus 6 all over 6x x minus 2. We check to see if we can factor that trinomial. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 6 and add to a negative 6. There are no two numbers, so that can't factor any further, so that would be our answer. Either one of these would have been acceptable answers, but you just got to be careful. Sometimes if you don't factor out the 1, it is factorable and you just can't see it. All right, number seven. Again, we have a trinomial here, so we want to factor that denominator to see if there's any common pieces. Two numbers that multiply to six and add to five are three and two. Our first piece has x plus two. It does not have the x plus three, so it's only missing one piece. And we don't have to worry about multiplying anything by our second piece because it has everything. So our common denominator here is going to be x plus 3, x plus 2. We have a subtraction problem again, so we've got to be careful there, make sure that we distribute that negative. Our second piece did not change, so that's 6, 7x plus 13. We have to FOIL the top. So again, x times x is going to be x squared. 3 times x is 3x plus 1x, that's going to give us 4x. 3 times 1 is 3. At this point, again, we multiply the numerators so that we can combine them together. So that becomes x squared plus 4x 
plus 3. We're going to distribute that negative, so that's minus 7x minus 13 all over our common denominator. Combining like terms, we've got 4x minus 7x, that gives us a negative 3x. 3 minus 13, that's a negative 10 over x plus 3, x plus 2. We try to factor our numerator, two numbers that multiply to a negative 10 and add to a negative 3. That's a negative 5 and a positive 2. And we can see the reason why we do this is so that we can see if anything cancels. In this case, it does. So our final answer is x minus 5 all over x plus 3. So remember, first step, we multiply the numerators out so that we can combine like the terms together. Once we've got it simplified into one fraction, we see if the top, the numerator can factor again to see if anything is able to cancel. All right, going over to the back page. In number eight, we have three pieces. This has x plus one, this has 2x minus 3 and x. We need a common denominator. There is nothing being shared, which means x plus 1 is missing these other two pieces. So I have to multiply top and bottom by x and 2x minus 3. Now what I would do when I multiply the top by that, instead of multiplying three times, I would distribute, because we're multiplying out anyway, to make this 2x squared minus 3x. All I did was distribute the x through. That makes it easier. So it's 4x times 2x squared to give us 8x cubed. 4x times a negative 3x is going to give us a negative 12x squared. When I look at my second piece, I've got the 2x minus 3. That means it's missing the x plus 1 and the x. So I've got to multiply the top by that. Again, I'm going to distribute that. So x times x, I'm going to multiply by x squared. x times 1 is x. So the second piece I'm adding in my fraction is going to be 5x squared plus 5x. And our third piece, we're missing the 2x plus 3 and the x plus 1. I'm going to FOIL those pieces out because then I would have to do, again, three multiplication steps. When I FOIL those out, I get 2x squared minus x minus 3. And I'm going to distribute that negative to it, or the negative 4, since, since we're subtracting. So that's a negative 8x squared. Negative 4 times negative x is a positive 4x. Negative 4 times negative 3 is a positive 12. Again, because I had subtraction, I multiplied that all by a negative 4 so I could distribute that negative. To get that all over our common denominator of an x, x plus 1, and 2x minus 3. Again, we're making sure that we take into account all of our denominators. Now we're at the step where we want to combine like terms. We only have one cubed term, so that's 8x cubed. A negative 12 and a positive 5 gives us a negative 7. Minus 8, we've got a negative 15x squared. Our x is 5 plus 4 is going to be 9x plus 12. All over x times x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. Now on the top of our fraction, our numerator, we have four pieces. I still have to double check to see if I can factor it. If I have four pieces, the only method I can use to factoring is our grouping method. And to save us some time, I already tried the grouping method and it does not work. Therefore, that is our simplest answer. But don't forget, you have to double check everything to make sure that it doesn't factor. All right, now here comes the hard part of the lesson, complex fractions. A complex fraction is a fraction that contains a fraction in its numerator and or denominator. 
So we need to simplify this. We, our first goal is to get one fraction on top and one fraction on the bottom. So we've got 2 over x plus 2. We already have that simplified down to one fraction, so we don't have to worry about the numerator. When I write this, I make sure that I have my fraction and top fraction and bo bottom fraction separated by a big division sign so I don't get my pieces complicated. We have two fractions on the bottom, so I want to make it into one fraction. This is missing an x. This is missing an x plus 2. So our new one, this becomes x over x times x plus 2. Our second piece becomes 2x plus 4 over x plus, oops, sorry, x times x plus 2. Everything that we just did, that's a simple adding problem. We distribute the 2 to the top. Now that we have the same denominator, we can combine it to be one fraction on the bottom. We rewrite our numerator. Make sure that you rewrite the whole thing every time so you don't lose something. We've got a common denominator of x times x plus 2. On top, x and 2x gives us 3x plus 4. Now that we've created one fraction on top and one fraction on the bottom, this can be rewritten. Instead of having a fraction, we know fractions mean division. So instead of writing this as a big fraction, I can say my numerator, 2 over x plus 2, divided by 3x plus 4 over x times x plus 2. So all I did was take it from a fraction. I took this fraction bar and I changed it into a division sign. Now we also know that division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is from a couple days ago. So I'm going to change that from a division to a multiplication and I'm going to take the reciprocal. So the x times x plus 2 goes on top. The 3x plus 4 is going to go on the bottom. Now that we have a multiplication problem, we cancel things that are in common and we are left with 2x over 3x plus 4. So we just combined adding multiplication and division all together. You've got to remember you can always multiply and divide no matter what the pieces are. If you're adding, they must be a com they must have a common denominator. All right, so this is our last problem, number 10. Like our last problem, the numerator again only has one fraction in it, which makes our life easier. So we copy that down. We want to make the bottom into one fraction. We get a common denominator. This one is missing that x plus 1. So we multiply top and bottom by x plus 1. Our second one is missing the x minus 4. So our first fraction in the denominator of the big fraction, we now have x plus 1 x minus 4. The numerator, we distribute that 1, which isn't going to change it, so it's x plus 1. Plus, we're going to distribute the x minus 4, or we're going to distribute 3 to x minus 4, which gives us 3x minus 12 over x plus 1, x minus 4. Make sure you recopy the entire fraction. So now we have that common denominator. We've got the one fraction on the bottom, x plus 1, x minus 4. Combined to the top, x and 3x gives us 4x. 1 minus 12 is a negative 11. Now instead of dividing like we did here, remember, the fraction means division. Division means multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have our numerator, and instead of dividing by the bottom, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the x plus 1 goes on top. The x minus 4 also goes on top. And then the 4x minus 11 is going to move to the bottom. We see if anything cancels. And we've got an x minus 4, x minus 4. So that becomes 3 times x plus 1 all over 4x minus 11. And that's going to be your final answer. All right, I know that was long, but lots of information. Just make sure that you pay attention to detail.